Hello there and welcome to my Tap Times 2 beginner guide. Tap Times 2 for dummies. There's a lot to cover here and we'll make our way through from absolute beginner. Like what even is this game beginner? I see a lot of posts on Reddit requesting something along these lines. I'm hoping that this will fill that gap. I got most of my information from Reddit and from the clan that I'm in currently. I hope it helps. Well first of all this game is Tap Times 2. The aim of the game is to progress as far as you can by leveling heroes, your sword master, swiping, doing clan quests and you guessed it, Tap Titans. So this is the follow on to Tap Titans, um, pretty obvious that's what the 2 means. The first one was cool, I thrashed it to death but all my heroes died and it made me sad. Fortunately for you, now your heroes can't die, which is really nice, but you will in real life if you don't do your clan quests, but we'll get to that later on. Okay so I've tried to approach this methodically and in some form of logical order, in the end I just ended up with a bunch of information, so I'll do timestamps below that will lead to certain areas that may help you. Okay so what do I do? You tap the screen, the game will prompt you to do this at the start and you'll do pathetic damage but you'll slowly kill titans when they die they drop gold you tap the gold you get the gold if you wait long enough you'll get the gold anyway uh, you use that gold to level up your sword master you are sword master sword master is you your damage will increase keep doing this you just keep on doing it tap 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 it in uh, starting at level 10 and every 20 levels after you sword master will be given a milestone bonus that is multiplied onto your tap damage at the very beginning this will be your primary damage source until you get the artifact the master sword or Maya to level 1000 both of these give tap damage from here Heroes. heroes are more powerful than you'll ever be so Swordmaster becomes pretty redundant at that point. The only reason to level Swordmaster at this point is for the active skills and to prestige. So on that note, active skills. Level your Swordmaster to 100 to unlock your first active skill, Heavenly Strike. This skill makes Swordmaster climb hazard his way up the Titan then drive his sword down to the earth for extremely high damage and if your skill build permits, some crazy skip potential. At 150 you unlock Deadly Strike. Think of Deadly Strike as a critical critical hit. Activating this ability will give you a chance to get Deadly Strikes that do crazy damage for a period of time. At 200 you unlock Hand of Might suddenly everything you touch turns to gold for a period of time anyway literally you get gold as you tap a larger pot of gold when you kill a titan more gold equals more upgrades equals more damage equals progression at 250 you unlock fire sword this boosts tap damage for a period of time and lights your sword on fire which is cool one of the best skills real early on when tap damage is your main but becomes pretty redundant at the later levels unless you're running a shadow clone build at 300 you unlock warcry this boosts your hero's damage and attack speed obviously after you get master sword or maya to 1k this is amazing at 350 you unlock shadow clone and this is cool, it makes a clone of you for a period of time that does pretty high damage per second multiplied by your tap damage. Combine this with Fire Sword, Warcry and Deadly Strike and you get ridiculous damage. But depending on your build later on, this can once again be redundant. So if you're using a clan ship build, Shadow Clone is a waste of your life. At level 500, you will unlock the ability to Prestige. This is restarting in exchange for Relic. This really only resets your stage, your Swordmaster and your hero levels. All the Gucci gear and pets you've unlocked remain, so don't worry, you're not losing that stuff. Heroes! Okay, you can hire heroes for the duration of your Prestige. That will attack automatically. They scale similar to Swordmaster, with multipliers starting at level 10, then every 20 stages after that. The higher you go though, the more these multipliers space out. 30 levels, 40 levels, etc. Heroes have attack types, they are melee, ranged and spell, and are either ground or flying overall. Now this is important later as there are many multipliers to a single type of damage such as melee damage by blah 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 or ground type by this much. Generally you'll just have the stuff that's optimal for the hero before your final hero and then your final hero as the mindless levels prior to that you kind of just splash through and grind your way through and they really mean nothing. Your other equips will carry you through that because you've become so powerful at this point. Uh, you still want to level all your heroes though while only your newest will really boost your damage the others get skills along the way that can do an array of things. These are unlocked at levels 20, 60, 100, 200, 500, 1000, 2000, 3,000, 4,000 and 6,000. All hero skills affect you globally. They could be anything from gold multipliers, damage multipliers, extra chests and crit chance, more mana regen, damage for particular hero type. Most are worth getting, some more important than others, but as I said earlier, your heroes can no longer die. Count your lucky stars. Equipment. This is important for two reasons. Firstly, cosmetics. Everyone wants to look slick, be unique. Um, mixing and matching equipment and transmorphing them to complete your look is the most important thing about equips. Then of course there's the bonuses to various damage sources based on what they are. Equipment levels drop based on your max stage, the higher your max stage the higher the drop. You'll get your first equip on beating the stage 55 boss, notice the blue health bar on him or if you're colorblind the slightly lighter grey shaded health bar. These will drop every 20 stages from here but only when you're pushing your max stage so 55, 75, 95, 105, 115, 135 etc. If you're unable to push for whatever reason, fear not, you could still farm up to 20 equip drops per day. You'll get up to 5 per prestige and they'll drop from random bosses between 80 and 99% of your max stage. If you see something come flipping out of the boss then land in a big old beam of light, that's your equip. Tap that shit. Unless it flips out the other side 
side, then it's a skill point. Pets. On stage 8, when you kill the last non-boss titan, a cutscene will appear. There will be a small helpless little pet named Nova, trapped in a cage by a titan aptly named Cage, but with a K. That's the only time this titan will appear, although there are people out there fighting the good fight to try and make it come back into the game so we can get more pets. And pets are important, and every single one of them is useful. They hover just above Swordmaster's right shoulder, and when you tap 20 times, they attack. This is a multiple of your tap damage and your crit damage. Once you reach total pet level of 200, they'll attack automatically every 2 seconds. Every 500 total pet levels, you'll get a plus 1 to pet skip. Can't say no to free skips. Pets provide both active and passive bonuses. Early on, this matters. The higher level the pet, the higher the passive bonus. At level 100, active is the same as passive, and the pet is purely cosmetic. you got to make sure it matches your set. That's really all it's there for. Prior to that, the passive is upgraded every 5 levels. Therefore, it's best to equip the pet that is furthest past its passive upgrade. So, like the 4s, 9s, 14s, 19s, etc. If they're both the same distance from the last passive upgrade, e.g. you've got one at 24 and one at 34, one at 29 and one at 34 or 39, then equipping the lower level one is better, as going from 20 or 25% of your active to 100% is more beneficial than going from 30 or 35 to 100%. Most people recommend buying good pets with diamonds when they become available in the shop, such as Fluffers with its mana regen boost and the all gold, all damage ones. Personally, I've never bought pets. All my diamonds are spent on extra clan quest hits. Up to you. After level 100, they get multiplicative bonuses every 50 levels too, so that's really nice. Fluffers stops this at 500 and every other pet stops at 1000. You obtain pets through the egg timer giving you one every two hours stacking up to four times so make sure you come claim them every what's that eight hours. You can also buy them or get them from some tournaments based on how well you do. Artifacts. Okay, these are the second most important thing in the game behind doing your clan quest. When you prestige, you get relics. You spend relics on getting new artifacts or leveling current artifacts. These are game-changing items that do many different things, from increasing gold drop to decreasing mana cost for skills and increasing skill durations. Some are ridiculously powerful, others are mediocre at best. This is why there is a tier list in the link below. At the start, the diamond cost of salvaging is quite low. If the artifacts you get early on aren't S or A tier, salvage them. Pray for Book of Shadows, then Boots of Hermes. The cost of salvage gets more expensive as you get more artifacts and eventually it's not worth it and you just have to accept your fate and wait until level 30 when book of shadows is drop guaranteed you'll get boots of hermes as your final artifact while all your mates will probably get both as their first two drops because murphy's law r.i.p you read through each and every artifact combined they do some crazy things and nearly all of them are essential in one way or another if you have any questions around these ask them in the comments i'm not too bad at replying we'll pump you full of some knowledge all right perks these are sweet little buffs you buy with diamonds you win from tournaments or you get them from the fat fairy she'll visit once a day randomly and she's lovely. You'll be given a power of swiping before your first prestige for free, save it for your first tournament. Alright, here they are. Power of swiping. You swipe instead of tapping your phone to tap at max tap speed. I think it's 20 taps per second. Adrenaline rush, 5 times damage on all attacks and decrease the time between spawns for inactive play. Make it rain, receive gold relative to your max stage. Provides a nice boost at the start so you can burn your way back to 80%-ish of your max without worrying about too much. This is extremely helpful in the early levels. It's not so much as you get further on. Mana potion. This refills your entire mana pool on use, then increases your mana regen by 1.5 times for 12 hours. Doom, increased damage over time for 12 hours. Damage increases against each titan each second for 30 seconds, capping at 100 times. This is essential for pushing max stage later on. Clan crate, think make it rain but better. More gold and gold for all your clan homies too. Be generous. Speaking of clans, a group of up to 50 players, you can create or join one after level 25 by the crest up the top left-ish, or by going to the Swordmaster tab and you go to the clan crate option. This will allow you to join the clan prior to 25 and get all sneaky beaky like. Cool. Now you're in a clan, a clan ship appears on your screen. It's up the top left if you're blind. Clans are the single most important thing in Tap Titans 2, specifically hitting the clan quest as many times as you can, as often as you can, as soon as the damn thing spawns. This not only boosts your damage, it increases your advanced start, yours and everybody else in the clan, so don't be jack, hit that shit. Alright, so what is advanced start? Instead of starting at stage 1 when you prestige, start at a percentage of your max stage. My clan is around 78% now, that's 78% less levels I have to grind through to get to my max stage now. Clan quests. These appear and can last for up to 24 hours before resetting. Once killed, there is a 6 hour wait before the next one spawns, so set those alarms and be there when it does. This is a team effort, the damage you do to the clan quest is whatever your highest prestige stage is, or 50, whichever is the higher number. You can attack once per hour for free, or more times at the expense of diamonds. Each subsequent attack gets a multiplier, so you do extra sweet sweet damage as you do more attacks. Bear Shop. This has 6 items for purchase with diamonds. It resets daily, it becomes available at stage 8, it sells things like pets, hero equips, equips and perks. Never buy equipment, unless it completes the set, as you'll outgrow up quite 
quite quickly and 800 diamonds goes a lot further than obsolete equipment. Fairy children and the fat fairy. Every two minutes a fairy or group of fairies will fly across your screen, squish them with your finger and take their goodies. Once a day a fatty will fly across your screen, clip her wings as well. The fatty will give you a perk and the little ones will give you gold or skills that automatically activate. Sometimes there are add fairies that give sweet bonuses like activate all skills, lower the upgrade cost by 90%, 10 diamonds, things like that. For these good ones you'll have to waste 30 seconds of your life watching a video or drop enough sweet cash to never watch any videos again. Porter. Okay there's a boss titan called Porter, he's amazing. Kill him and he teleports you forward 50 stages but only up to your max stage. It won't appear above your max stage and leaving and rejoining a boss fight won't make him appear. Sorry. Porter currently won't spawn in the first run of a tournament but he will after that up to whatever level you prestige that during the tournament. This is likely going to change in the near future. Porter will appear but only boost you plus 30 stages instead of the 50 during your first run. Boots of Hermes at max stage increases his spawn chance by 4%. Secondary effects on the slash equips can increase this too with Porter chance or all probabilities. Snap. There's a non-boss titan called Snap coming in 2.9. All we know at this stage is that he will remove half of all non-boss spawns per stage and will last up to 50 stages. If you only have one non-boss per stage, consider it gone. The effect doesn't stack and it remains to be seen how it will work with Porter and whether Porter will just skip you straight out of your 50. Personally I think Snap should remove half of all non-boss spawns per stage for a time period rather than a stage limit, that way it works really well with Porter. But I'm just a lowly schmuck so what do I know. Alright, tournaments. These happen twice a week on Sundays and Wednesdays, depending where you live. Pretty sure it's midnight GMT so work it out off that. You get matched up with up to 200 people with a similar max potential stage based on some super secret algorithm that you can't know about so you're less likely to try and exploit it. These are an important part of progression as you gain rewards just for taking part in them. Place well and you get way better awards so try. As a general rule only push your max stage on tournament days to get maximum reward for pushing and also from the tournament. There are three main tournament types with rotating damage bonuses or mana bonuses that spice life up a bit. So there's crafting shards used to craft sick weapons. Only ever craft mythics though because the drop rate's incredibly low and they're super powerful. So are their bonuses. You'll get the other stuff through drop. Skill points. Other than progressing your max stage, buying chests or the login reward, this is the only way to get these and they are essential. Weapons and upgrades. Get hero upgrades, weapons, equips, whatever you want to call them. People push harder on certain tournaments so be ready for a challenge come skill point day. Speaking of, less skill tree. This gives various effects to your pets, heroes, active skills and character. You obtain a skill point every 50 stages starting at stage 50. These are available after you prestige. At stage 50, 50, 550, 1050 and every 500 after you will also get a skill point that drops. Similar to equipment which you can then utilize on that same prestige, no need to wait. You only get these the first time you reach these stages or I would be extremely broken right now. If you wish to make changes to how you've distributed your points in the skill tree it will come at a cost. Two diamonds per skill point used and capped at 800 or 200 if you're a VIP. Sometimes if there are game breaking changes Game Hive will do a forced skill tree reset. This is free obviously. For help with how to utilize your skill points refer to my other optimizer video specifically the best optimizer video as this is the most user friendly and self explanatory one otherwise there are other guides you can follow all over reddit or in the tap titans 2 wiki if you have any trouble with anything or any questions just ask me i have a solid team that i can ask if i don't know as well and i'll get back to you this game has a really good community so use it time for the actual important stuff what should i spend my diamonds on salvaging those early artifacts to get book of shadows don't salvage something you will regret though because you will not get it until your last artifacts do your research buying pets to get them to level 100 nice and early you may as well have that 100% boost from all your pets. Helping your clan homies out by getting those extra hits in on spawn, the most essential one. Otherwise tighten chests if you're a super saver or you're a whale lord or whatever. What equipment should I use for my builds? Essentially there are four main build types and equipment changes depending on what one you use. Clan ship, pet damage, shadow clone and heavenly strike. There's a fifth one which is inactive but I'm disregarding that for this. For pushing, clan ship and shadow clone are fairly close at the moment. Clan ship slightly edges out shadow clone but this could change as early as patch 2.9 a couple of weeks time. We'll see what happens. For farming, heavenly strike is the best by far clan ship is second but it's a long way back i use a clan ship build currently as it's still quite fast with porter and i can push the furthest without having to change my build clan ship build equips all hero all damage sword whichever multiplier is higher best hero helmet depending on your current strongest hero any chest piece dependent on your play style and build currently pet heart of midas is the best so either all gold or chesterson gold whichever has the higher multiplier fairy gold is pretty damn close to pet heart of midas at the moment though for this all gold is the only option any aura highest is best though certain secondary effects may make others slightly better. Personally I found helmet and slash to benefit me the most. Experiment with it, let me know. For your slash clan ship. Shadow clone build or equips. Crit or all damage sword. Whichever is higher. Secondary bonuses make a difference though so include these into your decision making process when the multipliers are close. Helmet. Your best hero 
arrow damage or sword attack damage, whichever has the highest multiplier. Chess piece, with all of these builds, same deal as what I said in the clan ship one. Aurist will be the highest of sword or slash boost auras. Ah, the shadow clone damage slash is obviously the best one for this build. Heavenly strike build equips, tap, crit, or all damage sword, whichever is higher. Sword attack damage helmet, same dealio with the chess piece as all the other builds. Sword boost aura, any slash, whichever has the best enhancements. It literally doesn't matter. You're all about the splash, not the slash with this build. Okay, pet damage. While redundant at the moment, I will include this just in case 2.9 brings it back from the dead at quite likely will. Tap, crit, or all damage. Include secondary bonuses and work out whichever is higher. Chest piece, same dealio as before. Highest of sword or slash for your aura and pet damage for your slash. Yeah, as I said earlier, there's also inactive builds out there for people who don't want to play all day. Essentially, you boost everything that says boost inactive stuff. I won't include it in here as I assume you want to know how to play, not how not to play or how to log in once in a while. For Shadow Clone, activate all your skills, excluding Heavenly Strike, then let your clone do all the work. In the earlier levels, keep your skills leveled quite low so you don't spend too much mana when you get to the end, level them all up to max, burn through your mana, push heaps of levels. For Clanship, you only have to level Deadly Strike, Warcry, and Hand of Midas for a boost to gold. Level them to max. Activate all active skills, excluding Heavenly Strike. Tap the Astral Awakenings until they're gone, then hit your Coordinator Offensive. If you can time that with your Anchoring Shot, perfect. Mean push. Okay, now onto some miscellaneous stuff. Intimidating Presence. The more skill points you get, the higher your Intimidating Presence gets. This reduces your non-boss Titan count per stage. Think snap. Anti-Titan Cannon. This is a clanship splash skip. The more clan quests you do, the higher this gets and the faster your clanship builds get. Hero Upgrades or Equips. At the top of the Hero tab, there's an Upgrades button. Tap that in there. Each hero has an upgrade. You can buy these from the shop or you get them from chests or tournaments. Complete a set, as in get one for each hero and all hero damage is boosted by the number at the bottom. The more sets you get, the higher your hero damage each individual one increases that individual hero's damage a little bit too crafting equips i touched on this but essentially craft mythics only you get the sweet bonuses the others you should get from drops if you play enough you want to complete all sets but try to complete the one that goes with your build first okay equipment you can equip them by clicking equip tapping an equipment piece that you have equipped gives you the option to transmorph it to look like any other equipment piece in that category if you have a weapon it can look like a weapon it can't look like a chest piece you can also lock equipment by tapping them and clicking lock this prevents you accidentally selling stuff you want to unlock it tap it again you can sell unwanted equipment it will auto sell your oldest not locked slash equipped piece if you reach 100 equipment pieces keep the number down or lock your shit meticulously to prevent a disaster it should be noted there is the occasional bug that unlocks all your gear and kind of resets the look of your sword master it's rare but it happens so keep an eye out stay vigilant don't sell your important stuff or you will be sad all right just a quick little run through of some random stuff at the end here hints and tips really on non-tournament days farm the relics boost book of shadows nice and high max Maximize your returns. Get a nice big relic pool before you start, then on tournament days, start the tournament at the last safe possible moment to try to minimize the number of people that can potentially join your tournament. Just be aware that a lot of people do this so you may end up with a full tournament anyway. Once you start the tournament using the relic pool that you've massed over your non-tournament days, use it to upgrade all your damage boosting artifacts, the ones you'll get the most gain out of. Use the cookie optimizer, it helps a lot. Push like a madman, prestige when you can push no further, rinse and repeat, drop all your perks, push as far as you possibly can, even if it's slow, win. Rinse and repeat, week in, week out. Join the Tap Titans 2 Discord channel. As I stated earlier, the community is great. Use it, but follow the rules. Don't DM everyone for nudes. DM me if you want. I won't narc. I'm not a snitch. I can't stress it enough. Do your clan quest. On time, every time. Help everyone else out. Help yourself out. Don't be afraid to change your builds up. Watch out on the days after a patch to find out what the new meta is and adapt to it. Even if it's to a build that you don't personally like, it's the only way to advance yourself. I'm not a huge fan of the clanship build, but I've been using it for the last two months. Shadow Clone fits the way I like to play better but it's just not as good at the moment. At times it'll feel like you hit that wall and you just can't push any further. Just farm your way through it. It only gets worse as you go on. Uh, just remember there's a fine balance between farm and push. Remember if your farm build doesn't get you close to your main stage you get far less relics so do what works for you. Personally for me I stay in my push build but it's quite fast anyway and it's fast enough for me. I think that just about covers everything for this beginner's guide. I hope it helps. If it doesn't let me know. Honestly if you have any questions chances are someone else out there has that same question and I'll do my best to answer. I've got a really mean team behind me and they can all help me out in answering your question if I don't know it for whatever reason. Enjoy touching your phones.